Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the online classroom of SR Kerala. Today, our session is for BCom students from the subject Quantitative Techniques for Business. The topic is Parametric Test, One Sample Means, Independent T and Z Test with Problems. To handle this session, we have with us Dr. Joshina Jos, Assistant Professor in Commerce from Christ College, Irinalakuda. She has 10 years of teaching experience and had she has done her PhD in a study on the impact of agricultural insurance on risk management among food crop farmers in Kerala. Dr. Joshina is a research guide in Calicut University since 2018. I welcome you, ma'am, to the session. Thank you, and over to you, ma'am. Good morning to all participants, students, and supporting staff of SAP Kerala. Welcome all to the online session I am going to describe the procedure of testing hypothesis. To study the whole population is impractical. So the objective of any statistical inquiry is to infer the characteristics of a population by analyzing the characteristics of a small sampling group. The primary objective of a sample study is to draw inferences or conclusions about population by examining only a part of the population known as samples. Such inferences drawn are called statistical inferences. Test or hypothesis is one of the branches of statistical inferences. Okay, what is hypothesis? It is an unproven statement or assumption about a situation or population. For example, a sales manager may assume that new advertisement will increase sales in the next quarter. This assumption about future is a hypothesis that is proved or disproved with the statistical techniques on the basis of sample drawn from the population. The test conducted to as statistical test of hypothesis. Okay, I am going to describe some keywords related to testing hypothesis. First one, parameter. Any statistical measure calculated from the population is known as parameter. For example, population mean pronounced as Greek letter mu is a parameter. Population standard deviation pronounced as Greek letter sigma is also another parameter. Then what is statistic? Any statistical measure calculated from the sample. Sample mean is a statistic. It is represented as X bar. Small letter S indicate sample standard deviation. Parametric tests are those that make assumptions about the parameters of the population distribution from which the sample is drawn. A statistical hypothesis is an assumption about a population parameter. This assumption may or may not be true. The formal procedure used by statisticians to accept or reject statistical hypothesis is known as hypothesis testing. The next view follows the steps in hypothesis testing. First step, state null and alternative hypothesis. Second stage, decide test statistic. In the third stage, calculate the value of test statistic using appropriate formula. In the fourth stage, obtain critical value or table value of the test statistic corresponding to the level of significance and degree of freedom. Finally, we make a decision either to accept or to reject by comparing 
the calculated value with the table value. Suppose calculated value and table value is null hypothesis. In the second situation, suppose the calculated value is greater than table value, we reject null hypothesis and accepting alternative hypothesis. Then step number one, how to set null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis. What do you mean by null hypothesis? It is denoted by H0. It is usually the hypothesis that sample observations result purely from chance. Null hypothesis is a type of hypothesis used in statistics that proposes there is no significant difference between certain characteristics of a population. In the other case, alternative hypothesis, it is denoted by H1. It is the hypothesis that sample observations are influenced by some non-random cause. The alternative hypothesis proposes that there is some difference existed between certain characteristics of a population. After fixing null and alternative hypothesis, we move to the step number two. Decide test statistic. The decision to accept or reject null hypothesis of a statistic computed from this sample. Such a statistic is called the test statistic. The commonly used parametric tests are set, t and f. Here, I am going to describe in this session one sample independent Z and T test. In the case of T test, it is mainly useful for small samples less than 30. In the case of we use Z test. In the third stage, Calculate value of test statistic using appropriate formula. This is an important session. You have focused the formulas and kept in your mind. Independent one sample test or testing given population mean. First we state null and alternative hypothesis. Here null hypothesis state that. Mu, mu is the population mean. Population mean is equal to the numerical value of a given population mean. Alternative hypothesis state that mu not equal to numerical value of given population mean. What is the formula for using calculated value? X bar, X bar denoted as sample mean. Mu denoted as population mean. The numerator difference between sample mean and population mean. Then denominator standard error. Okay, what is standard error? Standard deviation of a sampling distribution of a statistic. Here, three conditions are there for the computation of standard error. The first condition, population standard deviation is known and sample size is small or large. We use Z test. The equation sigma population standard deviation divided by square root of n. Then population standard deviation is unknown and the sample size is large. In this situation, we also use Z test. The formula for computational standard error is S divided by root N. S stands for sample standard deviation. But in the case of 
t-test. Population standard deviation is unknown. We don't know the population standard deviation. So we use sample standard deviation. Then sample size is small. In that condition, we use the formula for computation of standard error. Yes, divided by root n minus 1. Okay. We move to problem number 1. This problem focus on one sample independent set tester. I read out the problem. It is claimed that a random sample of 100 tires with a mean life of 15,269 kilometer is drawn from a population of tires which has a mean life of 15,200 kilometer and the standard deviation of 1,248 kilometer. Test the validity of the claim. What are the informations are given the problem? We noted all this information one by one. First case, sample size. It is denoted as small letter n. In this problem, the 100 tires are taken as a sample. So, n is equal to 100. Then, 100 tires mean life is given the problem. That is 15,269 kilometer. So, what is this? This is sample mean. That is denoted as x bar. Therefore, we here note x bar is equal to 15,269 kilometer. Then the next lines indicate population of tires which has a mean life of 15,200 kilometer. What is that? That is population mean. Population mean denoted as mu. Mu is equal to 15,200 kilometer. And standard deviation that is indicated as here population standard deviation 1248 kilometer. Then how to test this hypothesis? Here we want to test the given population mean is true. What is the given population mean? It is in the question. Mu is equal to 15200 kilometer. First step set the null and alternative hypothesis. What is our assumption? There is no significant difference between sample mean and population mean. Therefore, we set null hypothesis mu is equal to, that is population mean is equal to 15,200 kilometer. Alternative hypothesis denoted as H1 state that mu not equal to 15,200 kilometer. Then step number two, decide test criteria. Again, we close look at the question. Here, sample size is 100. Therefore, there are two conditions, either small or large. Here, sample is large. That is generally accepted a grid statistician rule if the sample size exceed 30 considered as large sample. For we determine set test is applied. Then third stage computation of test statistic. Z is equal to difference between sample mean and population mean divided by standard error. Then computation of standard error, we already mentioned the three equations. But here, which equation is suitable? Think about that. Population standard deviation is known. Sample size is, in this case, large. Therefore, we use the equation sigma divided by root n. Then substitute the equation with the values. Here, First, we compute standard error. 
1248 is the population standard deviation divided by square root of 100 we got the value 124.8 then find out the calculated value x bar is equal to 15269 minus mu 15200 divided by standard error calculated by using the appropriate formula that is 124.8 we got the calculated value that is 0 0.55 okay before moving to take a decision i give certain important concept i explained that is related to testing a hypothesis in the fourth stage to obtain critical value or table value of the test statistic corresponding to the level of significance and degree of freedom what are the basic concept there are five basic concepts are important first one type of errors second one level of significance third critical value then fourth concept one tailed or two tail test of hypothesis then fifth degree of freedom okay what is type of errors according to the decision there are two correct decisions and two wrong decision wrong decisions are lead to error type one error and type two error what do you mean by type one error when this occurs Type 1 error occurs when the researcher reject null hypothesis when it is true. The probability of committing type 1 error is called level of significance. It is often denoted by alpha symbol. Then type 2 error when the researcher fails to reject that means accept null hypothesis when it is false the probability of committing type 2 error is called beta it is often denoted by beta symbol the second concept level of significance we have already mentioned the probability with which b may reject a null hypothesis when it is true that is level of significance the researcher desired the maximum risk called significance level he is ready to take it may be one percentage or two percentage or five percentage suppose in the question there is no information is given related to level of significance commonly accepted level of significance is 5 percentage the probability of type 1 error is usually determined in advance and is understood as the level of significance of testing the hypothesis if a type 1 error is fixed at 5 percentage what do you mean by that it means that the statistician rejecting null hypothesis when it is true about five times out of every hundred times. The third basic concept is critical value. The value of test statistic which separate the critical region from the acceptance region is called critical value it depends on the level of significance and degree of freedom considering one tailed or two tailed test of hypothesis the fourth concept related to testing of hypothesis two tailed or one tailed test of hypothesis in the question at what situation it is applied is a very important concept 
first we focus on two tailed test hypothesis what do you mean by that the entire region of rejection is divided into two halves and each half of the region is shown at each of the two tails of the curve the entire region of acceptance is shown in the middle part of the normal curve the hypothesis test is made there on is called two tail test for testing of equality two, two tail test is applied that is very important kept in your mind for testing of equality two tail test is applied one more thing kept in mind the size of critical region is also known as level of significance therefore it is denoted as alpha one tailed test i the right or left the entire region of rejection is shown at the one end and the entire region of acceptance is shown at the other end of the normal curve the hypothesis test is made the run is called one tailed test there are two types first one right tail test of hypothesis what do you mean by that the entire region of rejection is shown at the extreme right hand side of the normal curve it denotes more than the second one left tail test of hypothesis the entire region of rejection is shown at the extreme left hand side of the normal curve it denotes less than again you kept in mind for testing more than less than superior inferior one tail test is applied these are the all informations are necessary while deciding which test statistic is applied for testing hypothesis then the fourth basic concept is degree of freedom the interpretation of a statistical test depends on degree of freedom it is defined as number of independent dependent observation which is obtained by subtracting the number of constraints from the total number of observation here independent one sample test there are two categories z and t suppose in the case of z test z test did not large sample data therefore degree of freedom is infinite but in the case of t test it is for small samples degree of freedom under the situation of one sample it is n minus 1 then this picture shows a normal curve under two tail test entire rejection region lies at both ends of the normal distribution curve in z test degree of freedom is infinite how to obtain the value from the arithmetic table table value of t for t test and table value of z for z test some informations are there in the table first column degree of freedom in the last i noted that set test related with infinite suppose in the case of two tail test level of significance is 5 percentage what do you mean by that entire rejection region lies at both ends of the normal curve that means 5 percentage level of significance divided into two ends of the normal curve for testing of equality therefore on the right side 0.025 we obtain 
five percentage divided by two. On the left side, the same way, zero point zero two five. Then to take test, we take the values from the table that you shown under red red signal. Then bold letters at five percentage. Then under that particular column below, in it corresponding value one point nine six. So the critical or terrible value is either positive or negative one point nine six. Then we continue the problem by considering all this particular concept in mind. Here, degree of freedom and level of significance. In this question, level of significance is given. So we are assuming that commonly accepted alpha five percentage. Then sample size is hundred, so it is large. Therefore, set test degree of freedom is infinite. Then assume to be testing of equality, so two tail test. What is the critical value? Critical value is one point nine six. Then the fifth step, decision. Compare the calculated value with the table value. We already obtained the calculated value from the calculations zero point five five. Then compare with the table value one point nine six. Here calculated value zero point five five is less than table value of one point nine six. So we decide accepting null hypothesis. What do you mean by that? Mean that is population mean equal to fifteen thousand two hundred kilometer. We reach into statistical inference. The random sample is drawn from the population with the mean life of tires is fifteen thousand. Two hundred kilometer. What about the claim? Claim is valid. Okay. Then move to problem number two. I read out the problem. The mean life of hundred fluorescent light tubes produced by a company is computed to be thousand five hundred and seventy hours with the standard. Deviation of one twenty hours. The company claims that average life of the tubes produced by the company is thousand six hundred hours. Here, level of significance is given using level of significance of five percentage. Is claim acceptable? Okay. What are the informations are given? That should be noted first. Sample size hundred. Sample mean thousand five hundred and seventy hours. Then standard deviation. In this situation, hundred light tubes. That sample standard deviation is taken. That means here population standard deviation is unknown. Sample standard deviation is one twenty hours. Then population mean is also given thousand six hundred hours. Then how to compute? Again, we kept in mind the related formulas and conditions for the computation of standard error. Okay, continue. Here we want to test the given population mean is true. First step: setting null and alternate hypothesis. Null hypothesis states that mu, that is population mean, is equal to thousand six hundred hours. Alternate hypothesis: mu, population mean, not equal to thousand six hundred hours. Then decide test criteria. Size of the sample. In this case, hundred. So think about whether it is small or large. 
here also large sample so decide the test statistic z then computation equation and sample mean minus population mean divided by standard error in this situation standard error computation is very important population standard deviation is unknown but we know only sample standard deviation so which equation is applied for the computation of standard error yes divided by root a s stands for sample standard deviation then substitute the values standard error equal to 120 divided by root 100 we obtain the value 12 then calculate the value here sample mean 1570 minus population mean 1600 divided by standard error 12 Therefore, the calculated value is equal to negative 2.5. Clear? Then, how to take the table value? I already explained. This is also large sample test. Therefore, set test degree of freedom is infinite. Then, five percentage level of significance kept in mind to tail test testing of equality. There are three conditions: level of significance, degree of freedom, two-tail test. Then we take the value. The value is equal to one point nine six. In the fifth stage, we compare the calculated value here negative two point five. One important thing: note that sign is ignored only. numerical value is taken for comparison the for 2.5 is greater than numerically table value of 1.96 then what is our decision we reject null hypothesis then accepting alternative hypothesis that means population mean not equal to 1600 hours we reach into statistical inference the company's claim is not acceptable okay then move to problem number 3 average life of 26 electric bulbs were found to be 1200 hours with a standard deviation of 150 hours test whether these bulbs could be considered as a random sample from a normal population with a mean 1300 hours read the question and note the important informations sample size is given sample size here n is equal to 26 then think about that whether it is large sample or small sample it is less than 30 therefore it is a small sample then sample mean is given 1200 hours population mean is given 1300 hours here also sample standard deviation is given that is 150 hours then how to compute the similar procedure here we want to test the given population mean is true set null and alternative hypothesis Null hypothesis: mu is equal to thousand three hundred hours. Alternative hypothesis: mu not equal to thousand three hundred hours. Then decide test criteria. When we read the problem, 
problem you re realize all these informations sample size is small that is less than 30 here 26 so we decide which test statistic is applied in this case t test is applied then step number three computation of test statistic by using the same equation difference between sample mean and population mean divided by standard error how to compute standard error it is for t test what is the equation population standard deviation is unknown here only sample standard deviation and sample size is small that condition is very important then equation is different equation is equal to s divided by root n minus 1 s stands for sample standard deviation then what is the value here standard deviation 150 divided by root n minus 1 number of samples 26 minus 1 root 25 <coughs> then the value is equal to 30 after obtaining this standard error, substitute the values in the equation. You got negative 3.33. That is the calculated value. Under this situation, how to obtain the critical value? Here, it is t-test. So, one important thing kept in mind. In degree of freedom, especially t test n minus 1 so the first column shows degree of freedom total number of samples here 26 therefore degree of freedom is 25 that is n minus 1 then alpha level of significance that is 5 percentage again assuming that this is two tail test Therefore, we obtain the value from the table 2.06. Then move to comparing this table value with the calculated value. Calculated value is equal to negative 3.33. It is numerically greater than table value of 2.06. What is our decision? We reject the null hypothesis. Then accepting alternative hypothesis. That means population mean not equal to 1300 hours. Then reach into statistical inference. The bulbs could not be considered as a random sample from a normal population with the mean 1300 hours clear once again i remind you one tail test either right or left there are two categories in right tail test hypothesis entire region of rejection is shown at the extreme right hand side of the normal curve so it did not move more than then the second situation left tail of test hypothesis entire region of rejection is shown at the extreme left hand side of the normal curve it did not less than sometimes students are more confused whether to they take one tail or two tail. We kept in mind for testing more than, less than, superior, inferior. One tail test is compulsorily used. I illustrate one problem. A factory was producing electric bulbs of average length of life 2000 hours a new manufacturing process was introduced 
with the hope of increasing the length of life of bulbs okay example of 25 bulbs produced by the new process were examined and the average length of life was found to be 2200 hours examine whether the average length of bulbs was increased assuming the length of lives of bulbs follow normal distribution with sigma sigma stands for population standard deviation 300 at a 5 percentage level of significance once more this important problem related with a one tail test one more important point here sample size is 25 sample mean is given 2200 hours population mean is equal to 2000 hours then population standard deviation is known that is 300 hours these are the informations are obtained from the question then how to compute we follow the procedure here we want to test the given population mean is true set in our hypothesis 2000 hours alternative hypothesis mu greater than 2000 hours here we want to test whether there is increase so it is one tail test Step number two: Decide test criteria. Here, sample size is 25. Automatically, students are more confused. The sample size is 25. So, whether we we may accepting t test? No. One condition is important. Population standard deviation is known, and sample size is small. So, again. we apply which test z test that is important condition kept in mind in step number 3 computation of test statistic difference between sample mean and population mean divided by standard error standard error computation population standard deviation is known sample size is small we use the equation sigma divided by root n population standard deviation 300 divided by 25 we obtain the standard error 60 what is the calculated value 3.33 then how to take the table value in the beginning look at the third row that is the values given in parenthesis that do not one tail test maps this problem is related to one tail test so at a 5 percentage level what is the value test is set test whether the sample size is small large open standard deviation is set test therefore the critical value is at the end of this particular row infinite correspond level of significance 5 percentage we obtain 1.645 then compare the values calculated value 3.33 is greater than the value of 1 Then what is our decision? Reject null hypothesis. Simply alternative hypothesis. That means mu population mean greater than 2000 hours. Reach into statistical inference. The new product has increased the length of life of bulbs. Then move to problem number five. price of shares of a company on the different days in a month 
were found to be 66, 65, 69, 70, 69, 71, 70, 63, 64 and 68. Discuss whether mean price of the shares in the month is 65. This problem is different from the other four problems. In this case, the values not related with mean, sample mean, population mean, no informations are given. These are only frequencies are given. Here 10 days price of the shares are taken. Then what to do? Sample size denoted as n is equal to 10. Then population mean is in given this problem that is assumed to be 65. First stage, we compute sample mean and sample standard deviation from the frequencies are given. Price of shares treated as x, then total of x is equal to 675. Then we obtain sample mean by using the equation sum of x divided by n. 675 divided by 10 is equal to 67.5. Next is x square for the purpose of computing sample standard deviation. Square root of sum of x square divided by n minus sum of x divided by n whole square. After computation, we obtain the value of sample mean 67.5, sample standard deviation 2.655. Then run the problem with the similar procedure of testing hypothesis, set null and alternative hypothesis. Null hypothesis assumed mu is equal to 65, the price of the share 65. Alternative hypothesis mu not equal to 65. Step number 2, decide test criteria. Lot of information are you study from the theory. Think about sample size is 10. Sample size is more. Then what about population standard deviation? That is not given. So unknown. We compute sample standard deviation. So which test is applied here? Either T or set. Then desired T test is applied. Step number 3. Computation of test statistic. Difference between sample mean and population mean divided by standard error. First we compute standard error. Population standard deviation is unknown. Here only sample standard deviation is computed. Then sample size is small. We use the equation S divided by root N minus 1. Here n is equal to 10 day sample. 2.655 divided by root 10 minus 1. We obtain the value 0 0.885. That is standard error. Then substitute the values in the equation. Then we obtain the calculated value 2.92. Look into the table for the purpose of obtaining table value or critical value. Here, 5 percentage level of significance. Degree of freedom. Number of samples 10 only. So, it is more sample. N minus 1. 9. The first column, look into the particular value. 9. Degree of freedom. Corresponding to the value at the 5 percentage level of significance, we obtained the value from the table 
262. That is our table value. Then compare it with calculated value. What is our calculated value from the equation? We derive 2.92. It is greater than table value of 2.262. So we decide to reject null hypothesis. Then accepting alternative hypothesis. What is alternative hypothesis as stated by the researcher? Mu not equal to 65. That means we reach into a statistical inference that the mean price of the shares in the month is not 65. I hope all of you got an idea about the procedure of testing hypothesis. Do you have any questions? Uh, Kindly ask. Uh, yes, ma'am. During this particular time period. Uh, okay. okay. Uh, ma'am, uh, we have got two questions. Uh, okay. First one is, uh, can you please explain once more the parametric test? Once more? Parametric test. Uh, parametric test in inference statistic to estimate population parameters, we use sample statistic. Parametric tests are those that make assumptions about the parameters of the population distribution from which the sample is drawn. Therefore, the sample statistic is used to estimate certain population parameters. Parametric test on the parameter and angular, Namuk calculate a yamendi parameters in diagram. Nam already parnadana population parameter that is mu, mean. Sample statistic x bar. Sample statistic used to estimate certain population parameters. Parameters ubiogich namla cheyuna testigalana parametric test. Clear ayo? Hello? Hello? Uh, okay, ma'am. Uh, uh, further questions are uh, Okay. okay. Uh, next, uh, what is degree of freedom and what is level of significance? Okay, okay. Degree of freedom means. Clear, Anna? Clear, Anna, ma'am. Degree of freedom. Degree of freedom. Number of total observation minus number of constraints. That depends on the number of tests it is varied. In set test, it is a large sample test. So degree of freedom is infinite. But in case of small samples, degree of freedom, one sample t test, n minus 1. In the case of two samples, it is different. That is n1 plus n2 minus 2. The total number of observation minus number of constraints. The next question, I think, level of significance. Okay, level of significance denote the probability of type one error. Rejecting null hypothesis when it is true. It is a predetermined one. That means a researcher undertake the risk, maybe one percentage. Or 2 percentage or 5 percentage. Commonly accepted level of significance is 5 percentage for computation. That means 5 percentage indicate 5 times the reject null hypothesis when it is true. That probability out of 100 times. Clear? Uh, Hello? Okay, ma'am. Okay. Uh, another question is, uh, how will we find if it is a one-tail test or two-tail test? Clear on, ma'am. Okay, okay, okay. Clear on. Uh, one thing, very important point, kept in mind, one-tail test in the problem itself. Now, already discussed the problem, fourth problem. Our problem is, 
ഞാൻ പറഞ്ഞത് ഒന്ന് രണ്ട് വേർഡ്സ് നമ്മൾ ശ്രദ്ധിക്കണം വെൻ ബി കമ്പയർ ദ വാല്യൂസ് ഇൻക്രീസിങ് ഡിക്രീസിങ് മോർ ദാൻ ലെസ് ദാൻ ഇൻഫീരിയർ സുപ്പീരിയർ സച്ച് വേർഡ്സ് ഇൻഡിക്കേറ്റ് വൺ ടെയിൽ ടെസ്റ്റ് ഫോർ കമ്പ്യൂട്ടേഷൻ റൈറ്റ് ടെയിൽ ഓർ ലെഫ്റ്റ് ടെയിൽ that means entire rejection region lies at one end of the normal curve and the right tail on the extreme right end of the normal curve in the case of left tail left end of the normal curve in case of two tail test we are testing uh, testing of equality we are assuming that hypothesis is a tentative assumption about the population therefore we are assuming that there is no significant difference between sample mean and the population mean or a statistic and a parameter i th uh, i think we have covered all the questions ipo vanna ella nammal cover eedu kaniya questions la okay uh, okay uh, then we can go ahead and wind up the session ma'am en endengil add cheyan undo illa kaniya okay 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 thank uh, you okay uh, i would like to thank all the participants who have attended today's session i uh, keep checking www.skillparkerala.in for further class schedules thank you so much ma'am for your wonderful session and thank you participants thank you all participants and thank you for the helping uh, supporting staff of azab kerala once again thank you all thank you ma'am